Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll be working on the smallest car to ever roll in the studio. It's a 2020 Chevy Spark, and despite its small stature, it's packing one heck of a mess. Well, don't let the outside fool you guys. Despite this being a tiny car, there's still going to be a lot of work for me today, especially inside where in a few short years, it's taken a beating from young kids and is packed full of garbage. Though that doesn't take much considering it's so tiny. But if you're excited to see this transformation today, then make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss a future video. All right guys, well it's time to transform this tiny little car, so sit back, relax, and enjoy while I work my magic on this little guy. Okay, well I'm hoping that with this being a very small car that the whole detail is going to go much quicker than usual today. So I'll start by unwinding a bit of hose on my pressure washer, get the water line opened up, unit turned on, and get to work blasting the dirt off this spark. But after having done a few small cars like Smart Cars and Kia Souls, I know that the process I follow when detailing a vehicle is going to take a minimum of six to seven hours, regardless of how small the vehicle is. Now like quite a few of you out there, we've been dealing with some extreme cold this past week as cold arctic air settled in and we've been seeing temperatures as low as minus 35 celsius and minus 51 with the wind chill. So thankfully I can work in a nice heated environment today, although the cold is trying its best to get in as the grade beam is all frosted up and even though I've only got a short 20 second walk to the studio from the house, it was brutal this morning. Now as I switch over to the undercarriage attachment here, I wanted to let you guys know that this detail is a little bit more special than the usual ones because the owner's son is the one who arranged for this detail. Turns out his mom frequently shuttles around her grandkids and with her being a little older, cleaning the vehicle isn't an easy job for her these days so he surprised her with the detail but it almost didn't happen. They were about to bring it out to me last night and the car wouldn't start because the battery had died and in the frigid cold, that's not at all surprising. So thankfully her son was able to get a new battery in the car, so the detail was still a go. Okay, with the spark all foamed up with some of my mega foam, I'll get to work with my boar's hair detail brush, but wanted to let you know that you can find all the chemical products I use and all the brushes and towels over at detailgeekautocare.com. So if you enjoy detailing your own vehicle, then you can cut through all the marketing mumbo jumbo the big companies like to do and support the little guy who has worked tirelessly to ensure that everything I sell is of the highest quality.
moving to the interior now and obviously the first thing I'll be doing here today is removing the car seat along with all the other garbage and personal items around the car of which there isn't anything too terribly strange in here but when I got to the trunk it sure does seem like the owner is very prepared in case they get stuck as they've got a bunch of heavy stuff for added weight and a couple of shovels. Okay, with the front seats out now, I can see that the mess underneath them isn't all that bad, and I'm guessing that's mostly because the owner has had full coverage WeatherTech floor mats in here, which do their job well and protect the carpet underneath, so vacuuming and extracting shouldn't be too terribly difficult today, even though the carpet quality is pretty bad. All right, while I work on the area underneath the driver's seat here, I wanted to just quickly remind you guys about last week's absolutely insane detail of the Ford Bronco that was rescued from the woods after sitting there for over 20 years. It had an enormous amount of moss and fungus growing all over it and a truly terrifying surprise inside. So if you haven't already watched that one, then I would highly recommend you do as it was crazy. Okay, with the vacuuming done, I'll get to work on these dirty seats and I always find it interesting to see the types of fabric that manufacturers use because they are definitely not all the same. This fabric you see here isn't super absorbent so you can see the solution just sitting on the surface whereas others soak it up like a sponge almost instantly and that typically has an effect on the cleanability of the fabric too.
Now, not something I always film because the backs of the seats aren't usually all that dirty, but with the owner's grandkids having gotten their dirty boots up here a time or two, I figured it was a good opportunity to show you guys that I do in fact clean the entire seat and not just the bottom portion. Here's the dirtiest section of carpet in the entire car, but my carpet cleaner and drill brush has no problem getting all the dirt loosened up so it can be sucked away, although that is made a little bit more challenging considering the carpet quality in this car is pretty bad. This is what the extractor sucked out of the spark today. Pretty gross. Now thankfully the plastics in this car aren't super dirty, but nearly every panel does need to be steamed, so that's exactly what I'll do today to get everything clean. Well, I've moved through the detail pretty quick today, but still have a couple of steps left before I can call Sparky here finished, with one of those being to get some ceramic spray coating applied to this baby blue paint to really make it pop.
Okay guys, well a quick eight hours later and Sparky here is all cleaned up and looking better than brand new and it's ready to take on those frigid winter temperatures once again. So if you guys enjoyed this one, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Feel a little bit like Austin Powers doing.